All right. So let me do a quick round of introductions. I'll start with my screen. Well, actually, I'll start. I'll do the the order of the film shown. So, um, hey Noah, can you introduce yourself, your school, and your film, and the role you played in the film? Um, yeah. Hi, I'm I'm Noah. Uh, I go to Walla Walla University, and my film was uh, Find the Beauty, and I did everything. <laughs> I, okay, I, I captured a majority of the shots, and I edited it, but edit, edited it, and I did the voiceover for the male role of the beginning introduction, and I um, did the, the sound design, and oh, and I wrote I wrote the all the, the dialogue. I wrote that. Okay, great. Well, that's good to know. Can we come back? I have a specific question about that. So now for Knock Knock, all the Knock Knock filmmakers are in Avery's window. <laughs> so can you guys quickly say your names and the role you played in the film? Okay. So uh, my name's Avery. Um, I was, uh, we all kind of directed and animated uh, this project. Um, but in the beginning, I was in charge of story and um, Comet we each kind of helped pitch in uh, ideas for what we wanted to uh, create. And then we, um, then I also animated about a third of the shots. Hi, I'm Mugi. I did the design and I was a producer and then I did the post-production or the post-production and then I did the last part of the animation after he started redrawing and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, hi, I'm Ruth. Uh, I was mainly responsible for the rigs and the model thing of the animation and the first part of the animation as well. Yeah. Awesome, great. All right, so now I'm gonna go to... It. Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped something. I didn't go in complete order, so. It was Find the Beauty, then Sunny. So I'm sorry, Michaela. Um, can you tell me um, the role you played in Sunny? Absolutely. Hi, I'm Michaela. I am a student at Southern Adventist University, and I was the producer for Sunny. Great. Great to have you. And now for To Skate on Particle Wheels. So we have Finn who is, um, so don't be confused, like we have Sebastian's avatar on on the stage, but Finn is on screen currently. So can you tell me your role in uh, in your film? Yeah, I was the um, the writer, director, editor, sound design man. I did, <laughs> uh, yeah, yep. You did a lot, you, you and Noah, <laughs> you guys did a lot. All right, great, so let's get started. Um, so for Find the Beauty, Noah, which came first? the dialogue or the footage? Did you have the footage that kind of inspired um, the dialogue or did you have a conversation with someone and then that prompted you to go out and to find um, the footage? Um, yeah, so it, it first was the, the footage. I, I, I spent around a year or so, maybe less, uh, just getting shots, just whenever I was doing something and saw something pretty, I filmed, I'd whip it out the camera and, and film. and. Um, then when I was editing it together, I, I was like, I'm a fan of like adventure montage, whatever, but they they never really keep my interest because it's just like music and shots. So I'm like, if I'm gonna show this people, I wanna keep people's interest. So, and I also love like narrative based art as well. So I um, wanted to create a narrative. And so I just made one. Nice, it was beautiful. And which of all of those locations were your favorite to shoot? I think the waterfall shots, mm -hmm. um, just cause I think, I think I just, that day, I'll never forget that day. Probably it was just a fun day all around. Um, so yeah, probably, probably the waterfall. Okay, great. Awesome. I'm going to go to a uh, sunny next and to remind you in the audience, if you have questions, just, you know, hold on to them, but I hope you're thinking of some good questions. Um, Michaela, you said you were um, the producer for Sunny. This was um, a heavy topic, but an important one. Um, what led you and your team to want to tell this type of story? Yeah, so the story actually came from my director, um, and I, she she had offered to work with me for this project before we even had a script in mind. And as we were planning, 
she um, she kind of came to me and called me and was like, so I have an idea for a script, but it's pretty dark. And I said, well, pitch me the idea and uh, we'll see what we can do. And I think there might be something playing in the background. So yeah, I, 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 I we're trying to figure out what it is that's playing. I'm so sorry that- No, it's you... perfectly okay. I just hope everyone can hear me okay. Um, but how about this? If you're using a browser, go ahead and hit refresh. Mm -hmm. And if you're using the app, go to view and hit reload. So let's all do that right now and see if we can take care of that. Okay, I don't hear the music anymore on my end. I think we're okay to go. Sorry again, yeah. Michaela. No, or that's totally Michaela okay. To you. Um, especially since we're saying this is such a heavy and important topic, but um, you were saying how you were approached, um, mm -hmm. you know, with this idea. Yeah, and so so my director, Madeline, um, she came to me and she said, I have this idea, it's a little bit dark though. And so I, ha I said, go ahead and pitch it to me. And she pitched me the idea and I think her motivation be behind it was to really dive into what some women's realities actually are. Mm -hmm. um, I know that um, from, from an outside perspective, it's very easy to start judging people based on their situation without actually knowing what brought them to that situation. And as a woman and as someone who has female friends and my sister, and I have a little sister, so I could very much understand how difficult it would be for this older sister to be forced to drag her younger sister into this role. And we both wanted to kind of to present this situation as something that most people won't like um, mm. I don't know of anybody who can, can watch this film or I haven't had any reactions from anyone who's watched this film and said, yeah, I totally support that. Um, I can't, not many people are, are supportive of a 15 year old being forced into this line of work. Um, but we both kind of hope that it will help people understand and be a little bit more receptive to people's situations and where they are and, and understand that, that most people don't intentionally walk into these kinds of things. They're, they're forced situations and to help people and meet them where they're at. Yeah, I really appreciated the nuance presented in this. And you, you answered the next question I had, which is, you know, what you hoped people took away from it, but it's like a better understanding and realizing mm -hmm. it's not black and white. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Oh, absolutely. I am a huge fan of anything with a morally gray area and those kinds of issues. A lot of times people either try to stay away from them altogether or find a way to push them either white or black. And the truth is some things in life are just going to be morally gray. Yeah, yeah. And it gave me chills. You know, the, it does. I've seen it a couple times now, and I get chills every time at the end. So, um, thank mm -hmm. you, thank you for being part of that team. Um, that so, fun. yeah. So, um, knock knock. Avery, Ruth, and Mugi. How did you guys decide to tell the story through the eyes of young children? Um, well, first off, we wanted to tell a story that reflected like what we as students are going through, especially during this time with COVID. And I know that there's a lot of students in universities that even now are not in session um, because of COVID. But there's something about the innocence of uh, seeing a story through the eyes of a kid. And kids are just so transparent with their emotions and you can always really tell um, uh, what they're feeling, and especially when it comes to friendships a little bit, and that they, they make friends so easily. And I think that it having um, these two young kids uh, play the role of our students really kind of helped uh, to sell the idea of connections, and even now the struggles with that, that uh, this world that we're living in is having on our relationships. Yeah, and also like I was inspired by a short animated movie called Alike, which uses color to show the emotion and everything. And then that animation like shows a bond of family. So I I thought like like for children it's hard to tell with words or some like difficult film, but like if it's animation, like everyone can understand, like even the elder people or children, everyone can understand what's going on. And especially color, we can see it. So I try to use the um, cool tone at first and the warm tone later to show like emotion change, also the relationship be between boy and a girl. So yeah, that was my inspiration. 
Awesome. And so I want to get to the personalities of the two kids. How did you guys uh, decide on the type of personality the boy would have and the girl would have? Because what, in my opinion, helped make the film successful is that we got a sense of their personalities very, very quickly in a short period of time. So that's how the story was able to be told within two minutes. So how did you get, how did you guys decide on personalities? I think um, originally, like, yes, they have this uh, physical barrier in between them, but we also wanted to show that there is a personality difference with a barrier. And sometimes making friends with someone who's not necessarily the same, like, has the same energy level or an introvert and an extrovert, it can be very difficult. And that is coming from my experience. I've found that in a lot of social situations, it's very hard for me to connect um, with someone, um, especially if they don't understand like where I'm coming from. And so I think we wanted to uh, have those two opposites in our story um, to kind of show the two different ways that like the little boy, he's being, he's trying to reach out to the girl and the only way that he knows how is being really funny and silly and trying to make her laugh. And she's trying to be very studious and it's, it kind of backfires on him a little bit when he ends up hurting her feelings. Um, mm -hmm. But then he, he realizes that and then ends up changing his approach and eventually making that connection. Yeah, yeah, great. Um, oh, were you gonna add something, Ruth? No, oh. no, no, I think we're good. No. <laughs> okay, okay, great. Um, so Finn, I wanna go to you to skate on particle wheels, wow. That was so trippy, but so cool. Um, me and um, backstage, I guess you could say me and the other sunscreen organizers were like, man, if only we had this type of video in our science classes, maybe we would have studied STEM. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we would have gone to the STEM profession. But walk me through uh, the inspiration and yeah, walk me through the inspiration and how you uh, set on this journey with this film. Um. Basically, I was watching like a bunch of like old school, you know, VHS, like science, like um, not documentaries, but just instructional science videos about random stuff, like such as Lorenzo Tractor, which was what I was trying to recreate. And then I thought to myself, I was skateboarding and I thought to myself, I want to relate something that I do on like a kind of a daily basis or something that's super relatable, at least to somebody like me, which is skateboarding to something that's completely abstract and kind of a difficult concept to even grasp. So I wanted to put character and at least some sort of humanity to a particle. And so basically the idea is like, so the story moves along how the particles in the Lorenz system move. And yeah. Mm. Yep. Well, so what message, I mean, I, I feel like I may be smart enough to understand it, but I don't know. <laughs> um, what message are you sending through this very cool experiment of like, so at least in my understanding, the skater is the particle and we're yeah. seeing transform or metamorphosis, the metaphor, metamorphosis uh, this, to become the brick and to become the cone. Um, yeah, so it's what message or what specific story do you hope the viewers walked away with? Well, I guess, I mean, the sort of the message of the film is kind of like a weirder concept than I guess what the film is saying in general itself, which is more, the message of the film more so is that like you can tell stories about literally anything. Like when you're writing down a script on a page, you don't have to write about, there's no rules. You can literally just write about anything. There's, you know, that's, that's basically the, the grand idea of what's behind it. But I mean, otherwise, in story context, I guess, it's just, um, I don't know, I just thought it was an interesting concept to explore just the Lorenz system and stuff like that. And I wanted to get, I, I wanted to blend this weird, like kind of art house thematic thing with the, this weird science flavors that kind of brought me back to like my childhood when I was in the classroom and the teacher popped in a VHS yeah. Bill Nye, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It you took me there too. I, I really enjoyed that journey. Um, so I'm gonna open it up for the audience now. If you have any questions, um, raise your hand and Tanya will spotlight you 
or um, or you can send it to me in the chat, but raise your hand um, as we're waiting for you guys to warm up <laughs> with those questions. Um, Noah, how many locations did you film uh, or how many, How okay. So you, you got a lot of footage from a lot of different locations. How many locations um, did you draw from? I wouldn't be able to tell you. It, it, was, <laughs> I guess it, it was about a year of or so of footage. Wow. So um, how did you land on, because um, the first two minutes or more than two minutes, there's no visual um, of your film. How did you uh, decide to have this focus solely on audio for that amount of time? Yeah. Um, I guess it was kind of like I wanted, so I've done kind of, ex I've experimented like with that kind of idea of putting audio over visual like that before. But before when I did it, I did it with like movie scenes and I put the movie scene audio and then like whatever I filmed visual. And I was looking for to do that again, but then I couldn't find a scene that like I liked at all. And then I thought I'll just make my own scene then. <laughs> and then, um, nice. and then I, I guess I just wanted, yeah, I guess I just wanted to re, I wanted to create a world with the audio. So there's a lot of like sound effects, like the chair being pulled out, the sip of the coffee cup. I wanted to, mm -hmm. to establish that. And also I wanted the focus. Yeah. I wanted the, I wanted the audience to visualize it all that without any sort of reference to what I may be so that no two, no two people will have the same coffee establishment in their mind. Um, as they're viewing the scene, like everyone's has, everyone ha now has their own scene from that. And then I can show, the the rest of the film and have them follow along with and still have the conversation going but for that first two minutes i want just the audience it's kind of like it's almost like a look at themselves almost yeah like start with some reflection before i take you on this journey awesome i see a hand up jerry hartman yeah jerry your spotlight you can go ahead jerry oh i was just wondering how did the idea you know mix in with COVID because you've been, you know, for a while completely online and did that impact making you do this project? Is that for Noah's or was that addressed to Noah? I'm sorry. Or for Noah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I guess if in, in a lot of shots you see like people wearing masks and stuff um, because, but it was, it wasn't, I don't know. just like I said earlier, like, it was whenever I had a camera on me and I was in a place where I was like, this is really pretty. I just wanted to capture something and then later. So I guess, yeah, so there wasn't as much of like, if COVID had not been a thing, I just, I guess I would, would have had other shots, maybe shots with like crowds and people. Whereas I guess there's a lot of shots of me with maybe one or two other people. Um, yeah. All right. Thank you for that question, Jerry. Um, Michaela, do you know why? Uh, I, I know you're not the writer and director, but um, do you know why it was important to make Sunny a cosmetologist? I do actually know why. Okay. Um, it was our director was looking for a place that was ultra producible. And she was wondering, where where do women sit and talk? Where do you do? And we came up with this hair salon and um, it was intended to be that we find one location. It's super easy. Nobody has to keep, you know, there's not multiple places. Um, and it got to the point where we realized that a hair salon might not be as easy as we thought. It would be. <laughs> but we did find a place and, and the gentleman who let us use his barber shop was a saint. Yeah, that is, you know, if you want to get someone or you want to get women to talk, Go to the hairdresser for also the barbers. You know, the guys may not want to readily admit it, but you know, I heard that barber shops can be therapy sessions. Um, I see we have another question from Robert Martinez. Um, this is a question for the Sunny crew. Um, that last scene, um, were you looking to read into something that the audience wanted to conclude, or did you really have something like? Um, that you wanted somebody to take away from it because i i read into it that that the cosmo that she was going to take her place or something was that am i right in in reading into that yeah uh yeah absolutely there was an earlier draft where 
um, Sonny ended up doing some other thing that was basically the same thing. But what we finally settled on for the actual film is that she just goes in Becca's place. All right, Steven. Hey, this question is directed towards Sebastian and his project. Um, I'm not usually a big camera person. Um, you know, if the camera tells the story, great. But I noticed that on this short, uh, in your credits, you said you shot this on the Alexa. So my question to you is, why the Alexa? Why not a VHS camera or something else? What was your thought process behind that? Um, the, the whole shot on Alexa thing, that's, that's a funny thing. We should, for most of the part, it was shot on Alexa just because my cinematographer, Brian Oi, likes the Alexa. But that's actually a funny thing. The whole film was actually shot on like seven different cameras. <laughs> thing at the end, because it's like that's what everybody does. They're like shot on Alexa, so it's kind of like an inside joke, a little bit. But it was shot on Alexa for some of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and just to be clear, uh, that's Finn who's using Sebastian's avatar. Finn is the uh, director. Um, but Finn, since we had you up, which uh, visual effect uh, is your favorite? Or out of all the ones that you use in the film, do you have a favorite? Yeah, I do actually. So at the beginning, there's like this intro sequence where you see all these like 3D kind of fractal, kind of like images kind of things going on. I don't know if anyone remembers that, but <laughs> that was a thing happening. And uh, those, those are my favorite to make because I learned this like really old program called Mandelbulb 3D just some like random program made by some like AI mathematician dude just to like generate fractals. And I was like, this could be such a cool thing for like just visual storytelling to kind of get you into this weird mathematical idea. And it was super fun to like learn this weird obscure program to make these interesting kind of visuals. So those, those are probably my favorite of the, yeah. Film. Awesome, awesome. And we have one more question from Joshua. Go ahead with your question. We have about three minutes, so. Just keep that in mind. No pressure, but pressure. <laughs> awesome. My question was for Finn about the program he used on those effects, but he just answered it. Um, I guess follow up question, maybe just like, what were your influences? That was just like really cool. Yeah. What were your influences for that? For, for that, those VFX specifically? Or just the film in general? The film in general, I, I kind of want to answer that, that that for my question, which was not your question, but for those, okay. of you, <laughs> I don't know. I was there's this movie Uncut Gems with Adam Sandler. That's like not an Adam Sandler movie, but it, it's a good movie. There's like a there's like this thing where they go into a gem and it goes into this crazy stuff, and I kind of wanted to replicate that for those effects. That's kind of what I was inspired by. But in general, what I'm inspired by for the movie, um, just like just like old school VHS kind of stuff for at least those segments. But I guess, I don't even know. I don't even know what my inspirations are. Like, <laughs> just took him to a next level or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, here's the thing. You can, you have some time to think about it, Finn, and maybe you can answer some more during afterwards, which is our post-festival networking session where we have a rooftop and a, a, a lounge and it's a really cool space and you guys can chat and hang out afterwards after the program. Everyone put up your claps. Excellent work to all of you filmmakers.